What's going on, ladies and gentlemen, Sinks and Inks, and welcome to Lactic Acid. I am your host, Dominique Smith. Today, I have a certified baller, shot caller. She is thriving on the track. She is the Eliza Thornberry when it comes to track and field. In just a second, you're going to see why. Doing big things, running faster than the people listening to this episode, run circles <laughs> faster than you can get to the refrigerator. And she is my guest today. She is none un- other ooh, than the legend, Miss Brittany of Benny. Fam, what's going on? Appreciate you coming on the show. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Thank you so much for having me. I'm super excited to be here and cannot wait to get started. You know, we are trying to thrive. You know, the devil thought he had us via Zoom, but we made it. Praise him. Yep. Um, so so we are good. <laughs> so I've been asking this question and I've gotten some interesting responses. So I'm looking oh, forward to asking you this question. So let's just say... <sighs> You know, ABC slash CBS slash Ben and Jerry slash Food Network said, you know, this Britney girl, she's a world changer. Like she she is a big dog on deal, not only on the track, making indoor teams, running circles and straight lines faster than just people can even conceive, but off the track as well with her love for animals and and just the great things that she does. And so we need to celebrate her awesomeness by making this incredible late winter spring promotion specifically for her. ABC, CBS, they have, you know, they host the music awards or the acting awards. Mm -hmm. Uh, God, there's the Grammys on CBS. ABC, I think, has the Tonys and... Uh, the Oscars and all that fun stuff. So they said, here's what we're going to do. We will allow her to ass- attend any one of those events, just one of them, with whoever she wants to, whatever actor, actress, or musician that she wants to. Ben and Jerry's was like, hold up real quick. You know, we the ice cream kings of the world. Yes. Ben and Jerry was in on this interview. <laughs> and they said that we want her to give us two flavors of ice cream. We're going to make it and we're going to sell it everywhere that the ice cream is sold. Food Network said, hold up, we're bigger than Ben and Jerry. And they said, we either want a custom burger or pizza, or if there's any can't live destination dish that she wants created in her honor, we want her to tell us what she wants either on the burger, pizza, or on the dish, just any dish, and we will put it in every restaurant that we are affiliated with in this great land of ours. So I need to know the award show and the actor slash actress slash, and the slashes mean or, slash musician that you would want to be the plus one with. I need to know these two flavors of ice cream that you want combined. And I do need to know the burger, the pizza, or the dish that you want Food Network to customize and sell in every restaurant. Sounds great. Okay, so award show with my guest. Definitely would want to be the ESPYs. Um, And then I would definitely want Jenna Ortega because I'm obsessed with Wednesday. And I think she's absolutely amazing. And I love her very much. I like that. Okay. Yeah, I, I would love to just be able to like spend the night with like spend at the award show with her and be able to actually get to know her as a person because I think that she's probably very different than the roles that she plays, but at the same time she plays them so well and she has such a great sense of humor already that I think yeah. it'd be super fun to like see what she's like in real per- real life versus what she's like on a show. Yeah. Okay. I'm with that. Yeah. I like that. Okay. Yeah. And then of course, because sports people need more appreciation, especially women in sports. So you've got to bring high profile people to an award show. So you have to, you have to. Yeah. Listen, I, I'm with that. Listen, that, yeah, that would definitely get the word out. So I like that answer. <laughs> I like yeah. that answer. All Maybe right, you should doing? even do the Wednesday dance on the red carpet and then it'd be even better. Yes. Not you, you can't just do it on a red carpet. You have to do no. it like on stage. Yeah. Yes. Like if okay. she if she did the Wednesday dance and then just popped out the gritty, just you know, yes. uh you yeah. know she could do it. Like she that. definitely yeah. could. Like, come on, man. That that's that's what this award season is all about. The season yeah, to definitely. give. Give back to the fans <laughs> the entertainment yeah. value. What are we doing about this ice cream? 
So ice cream flavor would definitely be coffee and cookie and cream, cookies and cream mixed together. Yeah. What is with this coffee flavor? I hate coffee. coffee. Ice cream is amazing. Yes. Coffee. Have you tried it before? I don't, I hate coffee. Okay. So if you don't like coffee, you're not going to like it. So coffee, coffee, coffee but no, no, I actually have had a coffee flavored ice cream. And when I tell you it was the most bitter thing that so I've what, ever what, what kind did you have? Do you know? It's all the same. It, it yeah. Was, yeah. So well, it's... okay. So like coffee is kind of bitter itself. So if you don't like coffee, you're not gonna like coffee ice cream. It's not no. a flavor that you can hide. No, like it's I like see. banana flavored. Like if you don't like banana thing, like if you don't like bananas, you're never gonna like anything banana flavored. That's like that's it's right. such a strong flavor that you're not gonna ever be able to get over it. I smelled it and I got automatically got a sinus infection. I'm not I'm not eating this like literally <laughs> like Pepto-Bismol should have sponsored me because I one, was, I was, one I was whiff. struggling oh just, my God. One, just one whiff and I was like uh-uh can't do this <laughs> like, can't do this no my my whole system shut my yeah. whole system down so but the cookies and cream with the coffee yeah. so I don't know how that would so the cookies would take out the bitterness and add a little sweetness. You see, it I might be, try the cookies that. and cream has to be like the Oreo. Like it has to be the Oreo cookies. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Oh, for sure. There's no yeah, other really. like everything else is fraudulent. Yes. Now I will, I'm not gonna lie to you. I might try that. I think I you'd like it. That. I think you would. I've had uh -huh. it before and it's very good. Like I've okay. had coffee ice cream when obviously when I go to Cold Stone, I have to get coffee ice cream and then I get the chopped up Oreos in it. So that was Cold my Stone has that. Yes. <laughs> yep. Yeah. So you gotta try it. May have to make that move. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Highly All recommend. Right. Yeah. Right. If you try it, you gotta let me know how it is though. I'm gonna make a <laughs> I'm gonna make a deal with you. Yes. Um, but I'm gonna make that deal in just a second. Okay. Um, but what are we doing with Food Network? Tell me. Okay, so Food Network, we're doing a burger and okay. it's a knockoff of one of my favorite burgers here in Durham. Um, it's from this place called Burger Batch and it's like a regular patty and then they have brie on it. They have apple slices and then they have this like blackberry jam they put on top mm. and it's amazing. Oh, yeah. And bacon. Oh. Sorry, I forgot the best part and bacon. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so it's like, bacon, it's like bacon and brie, but then also fruity with the apple and like the jam on it. So it's really good. I like that. That sweet, savory. It's like a yeah. French burger. Okay. Yes, it is very good. Yeah. Is it served on a bun or a baguette or? A it's baguette? served on a bun, but you could honestly, it'd be really good on a pretzel bun too. I was, I was thinking that like, a pretzel yeah. bun because like you have to have like a little bit of crunch. See, burgers are amazing, but sometimes the the uh, like the bun is too soggy and like not enough. Yes. Well, like pretzel bun would be amazing. We're going to have to start calling you Brittany Theory because you sound like Guy when he's like going through uh, like the different I do. Ways. Food has a special place in my heart. <laughs> it, it does too. And trust me, we're going to talk about a good deal of it on this show. But no, I honestly appreciate Guy because he'll, he'll mention like the texture and the integrity of bread and like yes. how the bun has to hold up yes. um, to soak in all of the juices without getting soggy from the burger. Yes. Um, I like that. A good, a good, pre I've had some bad pretzel buns before, but, I, yeah, but yes. good pretzel bun yes. makes, it changes the game. It does. Game it changes for the sure. game. Yeah. The bet I was going to make with you. So yes. As people can see, well, people know I love me and my Ohio State Buckeyes, and Brittany does too. Yes, um, back guys, yeah. So O H, um, I O for sure. <laughs> but I also love my Tar Heels on the gridiron, the basketball court, and so Brittany is affiliated yeah. with um, that school in Durham, that's eight miles away. Yes. So, and and for those who don't know, that's Duke. Yes, I'll make you a deal. We're playing. Let me see. February fourth. So that's Saturday. <laughs> yep. We're both equally bad right now, so it's okay. <laughs> oh, we we are we are just. I have so I was. Uh, who? Which team do you have more anxiety watching, Ohio State or Duke? Because me, it's. it's I would say fun. Ohio State because right now. I don't expect much. They're they're young. They're all freshmen, new coaches. So I'm not putting the expectations on them. 
Um, so I would say, I don't want to say I've given up hope, but I would say that I kind of have <laughs> this season at least. I mean, we both teams are probably going to be an attorney. Uh, Duke won by like uh, maybe yesterday. Yeah. D- Duke will be in it. We team. played Georgia Tech. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, so we have bad. lost to NC State. We've lost to UVA. No, we've lost to Virginia Tech. And then we also lost uh Wake Forest. So our ACC record is a little rough right now. But didn't you guys have a big win to start the year? No, we lost to Kansas. Oh man. Yeah. <laughs> but I feel like you guys beat somebody good. <laughs> like um, okay, let's see. Early on, who did we play? I'm trying to remember. Because you played a... in that tournament. Yes. Yep. And we lost to Kansas. It was very close, but we lost to them. I thought you guys beat Kansas. That's crazy. No. Um... Wait. Okay. So we went to let's look. we went to uh, uh, New York and who we play there. So let me. Because who have you guys played played so far? Um. <laughs> Anybody? We should have beat Alabama. Yeah. We should we should have beat Virginia. So the best teams we beat are Wake Forest, NC State. See, we lost to Wake Forest. Yeah. Um uh, and then we, we beat, beat Ohio State, which was good, but we beat Ohio State and Michigan, but okay. that doesn't count because both both those teams suck. Um yeah. you guys beat Xavier. Yes, in that tournament in Oregon. Or yes. yeah. So that is actually a big win. You guys beat Xavier. Um and you guys beat Miami. Yeah, that was good. So Wake Forest on Tuesday. And then we have to play you guys. So I'll say this. We'll wait till the season, but if we win the season series, then I yeah. will go to Coldstone and try that coffee crack that Okay, game. yes, good. You like Duke, it. That would yeah, not if, be wrong. If Duke wins the season series, um, yeah. which at this point I just feel like you should just cancel both games because it just doesn't it doesn't like last year was like legit because you know yeah, you got that was rough. That was rough. Oh, last year was beautiful. Not not when you guys came and whooped us like we stole something, but when we beat you guys and then beat Coach K um, yeah. twice and made them cry. Yes. But yeah. anyway, that's neither here nor there. Um but Brittany, my friend, you are yes. a baller. So I was doing some research, and I hope I got this right. I think you started out as a distance runner. That is correct, yes. And so that that's why I say she is like a certified, with a capital certified, baller, yeah. because I have never met anyone who started off in yeah. pain, in yes. long pain, and yep. shriveled down to short pain. Into the sprints, making your yep. home uh, in the 400 uh, yeah. below. Do you ever think about where you started to where you are now? And it's just like, oh my goodness. Like, and you just amaze yourself <laughs> at just how much you've accomplished. No, I think that, like, when I think back to previous training, previous races, um, just kind of like general track life. So in high school, my main event was the 800. I did not really run the 400, the 200, none of the sprints really. Um, But we had a really good four by eight and a really good four by four in high school. And so I think that my experience with track has always been more focused towards the relays. I always have loved the relays. The four by four has like a special place in my heart. That is my favorite event by far. Um, And so I've always been more of like a team player um, and more focused on the relays. And then, yes, the open events are obviously important as well, especially when you're in high school for getting recruited. But I really enjoyed being with my team, having other girls on a relay, being able to celebrate our wins together and also being able to comfort each other after our losses. Um, So I would say looking back, the craziest thing to me is how different my training is now, yet how much I'm still being able to improve week to week, month to month, year to year. Um, I mean, I ran cross country at Duke my freshman year. I was on the cross country roster and then I didn't switch to the 400 until my senior year of college. Mm, Wow. So, and then that season was canceled because of COVID. 
So then that's when I came back for a fifth year and really just focused completely on the sprints. I didn't do 800 training anymore. I didn't do long runs. I just strictly was like a two, four runner. And that's where I'm at now. And I'm so happy. <laughs> yes. I, I was never someone that liked running. Um, and I think that a lot of either mid distance short sprinters and maybe even some distance runners, like there's a lot of people that are very good at track. They don't actually like running. They like racing. They like competing. They like training. They like pushing themselves. Um, but a lot of us don't enjoy like going for a three mile run. <laughs> like I still don't like that. I don't think I ever will. But uh, I think that's been the most fun is just kind of being able to see where I've come and still have optimism and excitement for the growth to be had in the future. So is it fair to say it was a smooth transition? I think so. I mean, I was really lucky in the sense that I trained with my current coach as an 800 runner as well. So I trained with him from, I had a different coach my freshman year, and then I transferred into the sprint group, sophomore, junior, senior, and then I've continued with that coach. So I think my transition was smooth in a sense because I had such a good relationship with my coach that was built over three previous years of me running the 800. Um, he knows what works for me. He knows how I race. Um, he knows kind of what lifts work for me mentally, how I approach races. Um, he knows when I need to be motivated because there's lots of workouts I don't want to do. <laughs> and so he knows that um, there are bets that he can make or threats he can make that will make me run faster. So like his classic, um, this is, we call it like the bait trap. So say for example, we have like three 300s um, for practice. They're supposed to be all out as fast as they can be. If you PR on the first one, so if you run the fastest you've ever ran in practice on the first one, you're done. You don't have any more. So it forces you, obviously, to try to run as fast as possible. But if you're close, it doesn't matter. You still have two more, even though you ran super, super fast the first Ooh. one. So it's definitely, but he, that's like what motivates me. He knows that what, that is what motivates me. And um, I think really thanks to him and his belief in not just my talent, but also like my drive and him being so willing to be patient and believe in me throughout my whole career has really been what made that transition so smooth. I had Maddie Price on the show. Um, yes. Yeah. And MJP. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and I asked her about Duke why yeah. Duke of all uh -huh. the schools you could have chosen why why did you go to Duke yeah but she said something interesting and I got and she mentioned your name I and she was saying you know how when she came in um basically you and her were like well I made let me let me just say this this is what I said yeah. based on what she said I said pretty much it wasn't until you came in and then she mentioned your name. So it wasn't until y'all came in to yeah. when Duke started winning, winning. Like when y'all became from like good and then you guys were like the LeBron and mm -hmm. Dwayne Wade or the MJ and Pippen um, of the team. And um, pretty much like <laughs> put the team on your back. Um, but you guys had some really talented squads. Yes, um, yeah, that, I would agree. Um, you mentioned how much you love that team atmosphere, yeah. obviously with the relays and everything like yep. that. How important was that for you in your development, especially yeah. going from something as high end as distance running, which listen, yeah. I said it on another show. I'm with you hundred percent. You know, they're like, I had teammates, you know, we had a talented prep squad down here, our track and field and cross country team. Like we get to run. And I'm like, no, like if, no. If, if I'm running, that means I did something wrong. It's punishment. Yeah. It's punishment. So, <laughs> yeah. so what was it like being in that atmosphere, being a part of that community, um, especially, you know, through the ebbs and flows, transitioning yeah. from the distance to the sprints, um, how important was that uh, for you in your development? Yeah, so there's a few things I want to touch on. First, um, yeah, Duke was not a sprint school. Um, Duke was not known for its sprints. We probably, I'm trying to think when this was. So Shannon Roberry went to Duke. She's an Olympian distance runner. Curtis Beach was a decathlete. He went to Duke. Um, and so they're probably, and Juliette Boderoff, they're all um, either distance or decks. Duke was never a sprint school. And then, so Maddie Price, um, another girl named Maddie Kopp, and then two girls above them, Lizzie and Lauren, 
um, we're all in a relay together. So that was Maddie Price's freshman year. That was the first time they qualified for NCAAs in the four by four. And they set a precedent that after that year, that was gonna be the goal every year. That once Duke had qualified a four by four, we were going to establish ourselves on the map. And that was the goal. Every preseason, our coaches made it clear that we were getting back to nationals. That was the goal for the four by four. And whoever wanted it, it was an opportunity. It was there. Um, if you put in the work, like you were going to be able to go. And so that was super motivating for all of us. And I think as I got older, so my freshman year, like I said, I was on the distance team. I did not train with the sprinters. I ran lots of four by fours in high school, but when I came to college, I was not really considered for the four by four because I was a distance runner and we had a pretty loaded sprint squad at the time. Um, so after my freshman year, I went up to the sprint coach and told him that I wanted to be considered for the four by four in the future. Um, and asked him what I had to do to be able to kind of establish myself and get opportunities to run the four by four. And that's when he offered to become my coach that I was just in transition from distance to sprints. And really what motivated me for that was because I wanted to be on that four by four. I knew that's what I wanted. Um, and so that team mentality not only switched me from being a distance to a sprinter, but then each and every year, it was incredible to see the growth of not just our own relay and setting school records and qualifying for nationals, but also just the growth of our team. So my freshman year, my sophomore year, um, we, sophomore, junior, and not my senior year because we did not qualify for indoor NCAAs when COVID happened in a four by four. We did not qualify that year. But my sophomore, junior year, we made both nationals in the four by four. Um, and then my fifth year, we got a bunch of transfers in um, from the Ivies. So we had a girl from Penn, um, her name was Elena. And then we had a girl from Columbia, her name was Amon. And it was known that when they got here for their fifth year, like we wanted to be first team All-Americans. That was something that Duke had never done on a four by four. And we worked our butts off that whole year to do that. And I think that it just showed the growing talent of our team because at our ACCs that year, we got five girls into the 400 final. So that was massive points for our team, but it also just showed that we had prioritized the 400 for that relay. Like, yes, it was great to be able to score 27 points in one event and win our first women's title ever for Duke. Um, but the fact that then we went and we qualified for nationals, we made that final and then we played seventh overall as a team that was never formally known as a sprint team. Like the progress has been tremendous under the recent coaches of both Sean Wilborn, who's now our new director, and then my coach, Mark Mueller. They have been really the ones that have prioritized the sprints. And I think that all of us girls bought into that. Uh, we knew it was important and we loved doing it. Like that was the highlight of my track career at Duke was definitely those four by four wins. That's a beautiful thing to see because typically um, four by four, I, I love the four by four, just watching it. Um, but I know in high school, you know, everybody since pain <laughs> by the time, yeah. you know, you're mm -hmm. running, you know, coaches like, come on, it's right time for the four by four. Yeah. You're like, nah, I got to go for him. Like, yeah, hey. no, I mean that, I think really just as a testament to like the willpower of what you will do for your teammates when you are hurting. Nobody is ever fresh for a four by four. Nobody ever feels good for a four by four, but like we loved running together and it was incredible what we could do together. Um, so that's why we did it. And I think like the most exciting part of it is being able to have had so much success, but still see the team getting better and better each year. Like it would be disappointing and sad to me if all of us graduated and our four by four wasn't good anymore. Oh, and they weren't like that would be really sad and disappointing whereas the reverse has happened and we've gotten insane recruits and been able to really improve and keep establishing that momentum that we did um while we were there so um, how much pride do you take in that like you were the star oh my god uh, yes um i think that like we definitely take a lot of pride and it was something that was, I don't think you really realize when you're young and you're racing, you're kind of just enjoying the moment with your friends. But then as we would travel, we would run into random people that would be like, oh yeah, I went to Duke and I was so surprised when I saw you guys in the NCAA final in the four by four or like a lot of older Duke track alone would watch us in races and be like, I can't believe that you guys are like such a good sprint school now given that when I was there we had no sprinters so I think that it's super cool to kind of just see that we were really able to help establish that <laughs> and then, um, the team has done a great job of being able to keep that going 
like we used to come in and our goal would to be like to podium at the like at ACC's um in the four by four now the goal is to win like we come in as the favorites we come in as the favorites for the team title which is crazy because when I was a freshman we were not on the map like nobody knew dude and then the fact that now they go to ACC's and they come in as a favorite on the women's side and favorites to win the four by four is incredible and so exciting for them what was it like how much um and this will be the last question before we get to the off track stuff yeah um how much confidence did you take making that indoor team, that indoor world championship team? Like, yeah, what, was, so what was that experience like? That was uh, a crazy experience for sure. I So indoor had never been the goal for that year. Um, I remember having a meeting with my coach in December and we were kind of going through a rough race plan and what we wanted to accomplish in the season. And of course the goal was outdoor worlds. Um, they were going to be held in Eugene and that was the goal. And then we described indoor USAs and indoor worlds as kind of like the cherry on top. Like it would be great if it happened, if it didn't happen, like that wasn't our main goal and that was okay. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I think that coming in, what I thought was really crazy about that meet was because it was just, it was the post Olympic year. The, the competition was pretty weak at indoor USAs. So I registered, I had been running fairly well. Like I was pretty close to my indoor PR and registered. And once we saw the entries, it was kind of like, if I, if I messed up, I wouldn't have made the team, but if I did what I knew I could do and what I needed to do, I would have made the team, which I think coming in for my first like indoor USAs, that was kind of a lot of pressure. I was yeah. there by myself. My coach didn't travel with me. That was my first like big meet by myself with all of the pros. I didn't have my team there to support me. I had one girl that was also at Duke for a fifth year, um, Shania Rothwell, she's a hurdler. So she was my roommate in um, Spokane. But I think that it was kind of just like managing nerves and knowing it's always a little more nerve wracking when you're kind of expected to do something like when yeah. you come in as an underdog, nobody really knows you. That's exciting. And of course, if you make a team, that's awesome. But when you come in ranked where you should to make the team, like if you don't make the team, it means you messed up. Yeah. So I think that kind of having that pressure, I was really nervous and I was alone. My coach wasn't there. He was at a different meet that weekend with Duke. Um, so it really just kind of forced me to like mature and grow up on my own very quickly. Um, but it was so exciting. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. And just having the opportunity to like represent the US and be able to meet a bunch of other amazing athletes was my favorite part um, of being in Serbia for sure. Yeah. And like I said, you, you know, it was like cool. You rep the, you know, red, white, and blue and you got that yeah. experience. That's real. You yeah. Know, that mm -hmm. is real. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Let's get to what the people really want to know. And the that's, people. Yes. Got, <laughs> As the OJ said, got to give the people, the people what they want. Yes. And what they want is to know what are three things about you that people do not know. Okay. So let's see. I can only pick three or I, I will focus on three. So okay. do, you, I, do we need, do we need to boost it to five? No, three is perfect. That would okay. be good. Three is good. So <laughs> Um, I, as of now, will be going to veterinary school next year at NC State. So that will be super exciting. Um, I've always wanted to be a vet. That was my dream ever since I was like three years old is to be a vet, um, which is always really interesting to me because most of the elite athletes that I talk to or that I know have always said like their dream was to be an Olympian when they were three or their dream was to always try to be the best at their sport. And yes. I have always wanted to accomplish a lot in my sports and in my athletic career, but like my dream has always been to be a vet and I'm super excited to do that. Um, my, let's see, another thing that people, I have a horse at home, so I'm a secret horse girl. You have, you have a horse? <laughs> I have a horse at home. Yes. Her name is Muffin. Um, Muffin. She does not, yeah, she does not live with me in North Carolina. She is at home in Ohio. Um, and so yeah, that's always something that my coaches and everyone makes fun of me about. Um, yeah. That would be pretty dope. I, yeah, I, like that. I, I love riding horses. Yeah, so I grew up, my mom had horses when she was growing up. And so then I was fortunate enough to have my own horse and it was a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, and then let's see, what is another thing? I love to bake and I love to cook. That would be like one of my main hobbies. Oh, this is good for you. So that's like my <laughs> main one of my main hobbies is like baking and cooking. So my goal 
like um, business when I graduate vet school is to open up my own practice and it'll be a coffee shop and vet clinic combined. So when my patients come in, they can drop their dogs off with me and I'll treat them, do whatever I need to do. And then they can go and buy all of my delicious baked goods and drink my coffee and it'll be great. I am I'm with <laughs> everything except the coffee. If you, if you, you know. Hey, I'll have, I'll have tea, smoothies. What, there you what go. Do you, what do you drink if you're at a, like a cafe? What would you drink? <sighs> Some water. Some water. Uh, see, I'll, what would I drink? Like if you went to like Starbucks, what would you order? <laughs> Come on now. Uh, if I, so what's the last thing I got from Starbucks? I got a cake pop. Oh, yeah, those are good. And a cookie or a cookie and some water. Okay, so I'll have um, water for you and some baked goods and you'll be fine. It'll so be good. I'm, I'm with that. I'm with you. I will support that. Listen, I listen. When, when, when it pops off, I'm going to have you back on the show and then we're going to go in detail. Um, yes. Have you ever seen the show The Wild Thornberries? No, I have not, but I've heard of it. So do you know about the premise of it at all? No, explain it again. Okay, so early on in the show, I said that she is the Eliza Thornberry yes. of track and field. So Eliza Thornberry was, so they were travelers. They worked, I don't really know what the deal was with that family. They lived in a RV and they would travel the world, well, by the world, I mean Africa. Um, yeah. And they were like the Nat Geo, essentially. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. And so... <laughs> they eliza had the ability to talk to animals okay and all of the animals were her best friend oh like my she, talked, yeah. she talked uh -huh. to elephants she talked to fish she talked to snakes she talked to yeah. dogs cats oh. her best friend his name was darwin uh he was a chimpanzee okay uh, yeah with the family and she just had this innate love for animals and the animals loved her yeah. They protected her. They like looked out for her, and she was always getting into adventures. That's why I say you are the Eliza yes. Thornberry. That's a major um, compliment. Thank you. Track and field. What's what came about in terms of your love for animals, or how so did I that think, start? Yeah, I think it really started with my mom. Um, my mom has always been a lover of animals, and I grew up and. Like, of course, when I was very, very little, I didn't own my own animals. I had like a bunch of stuffed animals and I would pretend like they were my pets. Um, and then my mom had a few cats. We had a dog growing up. And then I just loved anything animal related. Like I remember for Christmas one year, my parents got me a book of like 101 dog breeds or something. And I would go through and read this book like no other. I would highlight the pages. I would earmark the dogs that I specifically wanted. Like my dad will make fun of me so much today because he has kind of like a folder of a bunch of like random artwork I did when I was a kid. And he always jokes because he's like, look at all this dog stuff in here. Like I was just obsessed with dogs from a very young age. And then my mom, when I was about six or seven, um, signed me up for horseback riding lessons. Um, and she would, I actually rode. So the first barn that I went and got lessons from was the barn that she grew up riding at. Okay. So it was really fun to be able to like go to horseback riding lessons with my mom. My mom would ride a horse. I would ride a horse. And the instructor that taught my mom how to ride also was teaching me. Um, and so that was something that I really enjoyed doing with my mom. Um, and we started showing a lot together. And then I was fortunate enough to actually get my own horse um, that my parents were generous enough to let me to do and to support my passion for that. Um, and so this is actually really funny. So when I was in high school, my freshman year, um, I was on, I had always grown up playing soccer. So soccer, horseback riding and skiing were like the main sports that I would do when I was little. And the track coach wanted me to come out for, or the, yeah, the track coach wanted me to come out for track after seeing a soccer game and seeing I was decently fast. And I literally did not run track my freshman year because I was too busy competing in horseback riding. So I didn't start running track competitively until my sophomore year of high school. And my high school coach, his name is Bobby McCoy, will never let me forget. He will never forgive me for not running my freshman year. Because he was like, we could have done so many good things. I was too busy riding my horse. So it's okay. <laughs> But, um, oh, that's not your fault god no 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 but I would say that really just my parents kind of like giving me not only the information so like providing me with with books and letting me watch shows and taking me to like barns and 
like my dad will always make fun of me because we literally went on a ski trip to Jackson Hole, Wyoming, and I would make him leave the resort at noon so that he could go walk dogs with me at the shelter in the afternoon. And he was like, Brittany, we're here for a week at one of the best ski resorts in the nation. Why am I letting you convince me to go walk rescue dogs at this shelter in Wyoming? But I think that really my love for animals um, was established by my parents and was able, like they, I already had it and they were able to support me in that. Um, and that's really where it came from. Your former coach, I, I, I could just envision that in my head. Like, listen, Brittany, we could have been something. <laughs> like, yeah, yes, yeah, he, yeah, he, oh my God. It was oh, so fun. Man. Oh man, so growing up in Ohio, uh mm -hmm. muff muffin i think that muffin perfect, yes i think that's a perfect name for a horse yes, um he's oh my gosh so do you guys how do i say it? so how do you tell me how that works so like yeah. do you keep it in a like do you mm -hmm. own the barn or yep. yeah oh, okay. so um when i was in high school i lived with my grandparents and my mom and my grandparents had a barn on their property. We had 10 horses at the time. And it was really the responsibility of myself and my cousins that were around my age to take care of all of the horses. Um, so I think that having horses from a young age really teaches you a lot of discipline and teaches you really the requirements of what animal ownership is like. I think a lot of people don't grow up knowing how much work animals actually are. And they get these animals not knowing like, how much time actually, time effort and money goes into caring for animals. Um, and so then um, my mom bought her own house and we moved. And so now Muffin lives at my mom's house and um, there is a barn there. We have our own pasture. So we're pretty like self-sufficient and she lives at home. Whereas a lot of other people say, I went to school and I wanted my horse to come down here so I could ride on the weekends. A lot of people would then ship their horse and then you would board it at a barn. So I would pay someone for stall space and my horse would live in their barn and I would pay. It's like lease. Like you're like leasing. Right, you're leasing. Stall. Yeah. But I don't lease. We have our own barn and um, she stays there. Yeah. Gosh. Got cage so I am also grateful for my mother who has so willingly dedicated herself to caring for my horse now that I live in North Carolina. Oh my gosh. It's like. Yeah. Our like the Kate Stover track and field. <laughs> I am um, quite the collector of animals. Right now at my mom's house, we have, but my mom has really aided in this. This is not my fault. So I have a horse. We had goats. <laughs> there's chickens. There's rabbits. There is ducks. And my mom just bought a pot belly pig. And then I just got a puppy last week. And so I have my own dog now in North Carolina. Oh he's, my he's goodness dog. gracious. Like what? The, <laughs> there's only 24 hours in the day. Like, yes. Oh my gosh. Yes. There's lots where my mom and I, um, she refers to her house as the circus and, oh, this is great too. This is my other fact that everyone should know about me. My mom calls me a squirrel. Um, cause she says I'm spazzy and look like one. So Ooh, Instead of boy. my mom calling me like Brittany, I'm literally in her phone saved as squirrel. <laughs> so like she refers to herself as mother of squirrel. And I am, I have a younger sister. So I'm squirrel number one, just because I'm older. And then Brianna is squirrel number two. <laughs> Y'all country, aren't you? <laughs> yes. I, and I say that because my family is country because yeah. I, I live here in Orlando, but we're, we're, the origins are from Alabama. Okay. Uh, yeah. You know, I got family who, you know, they have a ranch. On a and, stick. Yeah. And, and all that stuff. And so we have like these crazy nicknames and stuff. So that's, yeah. that's some, like that. That's some, that's some country stuff. Yes. What would, so, and so you mentioned this veterinarian um, yep. clinic that you would have. There's this place in Florida, mm -hmm. Claremont. I think it's in Claremont. Yep. Okay. But it is, um it's a cat cafe oh uh, yes yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. so the cats like come and then they have all these cat yeah. houses and all that crap yes. um uh, let me just preface my comments by saying i say crap about everything it good i agree bad, yes ugly. i agree um so just so don't you know don't take offense if i say i will let you know if crap means is is literal uh yes crap, no, but, I agree. but in this it's sense just stuff. It's yeah, just like stuff. Huge stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, they have all these houses and toys and all this stuff, but you can oh, go cool. and get like a latte and oh, yeah. like, chill. Yeah. And so I can definitely 
see that. Just like, oh, that would be cool. Like, I think the people, like my clients, will be so much happier too because of that, instead of them being impatient and bored in my lobby, they can go and they can enjoy some yummy drinks and some delicious snacks. I'll have free Wi-Fi so they can hook up their their devices and they can just chill and it'll be great. Have you thought about maybe like having animal education, like little, uh, like how do I put it? I I like going to the zoo yeah. um, mm-hmm. and stuff. And so like, I don't know, maybe having a bin of like shelter dogs and stuff like that, where people could yeah. come in and pet them, but also you can kind of learn different things about yeah. animals, animal safety, um, yeah. things you need to know before purchasing. This is why I yeah. don't have any animals. Uh, yeah. I killed my fish when I was like 11 by accident. Okay. Um, yeah. I got it from the circus and yeah. I accidentally shook up the bag. Oh, and, you did a Finding Nemo. Yeah. Yeah, but Nemo lived. Um, this dude gone. Yeah. So, um, okay. rest then, in peace, your fish. Yeah, rip. And then I killed. No, did I kill the fish? Almost. He made. He made it. I didn't realize how you can't feed a fish like a bunch of fish food. But oh, I would look yeah. at like the fish food they were feeding. I'm like man that fish hungry and stuff and i'm yeah. thinking the fish is me and uh but he made it i think um regardless yes. I, there are things that i didn't know um yeah. that like i know now going forward so it's like mm-hmm. i feel like you can have like it's a destination that that. Yes, I think that yeah, you can have some education courses or especially too because a lot of the time your whole family is coming to the vet with you. So say like you have your mom and your dad, you guys have a dog and you're like a young kid. That was really my first interaction with vets when I was growing up was the fact that we had dogs and so when we would go to the vet, my parents would bring me with bring me with them and I would be able to kind of just see what was happening, talk to the vets um and really like learn from there. So I think that yeah, Definitely an education component would be um, useful as well and um, beneficial for lots of owners because there's just so many things that you wouldn't know about until you're faced with that issue. Like you always learn from your mistakes. And unfortunately, when you're an animal owner, your mistakes can be pretty costly um, or or deadly at times. So trying to be proactive and avoid that would definitely be good. That's legit. I mean, geez, I think I... All you need to do is really just open up a cold stone or something like that in there, and um, and serve my coffee, cookies and, and cream. Yeah, it'll be great. And serve, and we're gonna call that the Avini special. Um, yep. So I'm, I'm with that. So cooking. Yeah. What What is it? Because you know, food is that's just my thing. Uh, oh, yeah. What is it that you whipping up that has so, the fans yeah. so excited? Because you I said like- that with some confidence, cooking and baking. Yes. So I love baking stuff. I usually will try like baking some kind of like either muffins or like bread or something on the weekends. Um, But my favorite thing is not just baking it, but then being able to like share it with my friends. So I think that like, yes, cooking itself is so much fun, but there's no better feeling than cooking and like enjoying it with either your family or your friends. And I think that's my favorite thing. And I really learned that from my dad. My dad is a really, really good cook. And it's super fun when I go home to just try these recipes that we would never imagine making um, and being able to then like, after a long day of trying to make some ridiculous food, be able to sit down and be like, <laughs> okay, like we did this, like this was so fun. So I think that he really instilled in me um, that love for just like trying new things. And I'm not picky at all. Like I love trying different um, cuisines, different spices. Um, so I think it's super fun to like step out of your comfort zone and like cook like Indian food or something um and it's yeah I really like just trying to create new things or what I want to do and what I'm getting better at of course when you're new to cooking you're kind of just following a recipe and just like not knowing what you're doing and when it comes out and maybe you don't like it you're like oh I don't really taste like this doesn't taste that good but I don't know what to do to fix it I'm like starting to get to the point where as I'm cooking, I'll know like, okay, I like this spice and things that are like this. So I'm going to add this also, even though it's not on the recipe or like opening my fridge after a super late practice and being like, what am I going to make with these random things that are in my fridge? Like, it's super fun to just try new things and mix and match. And that's like my creative um, outlet. I'm not super artsy. Um, I can't sing. So (laughs) I think that's my creative outlet. Um, is cooking, cooking. Okay. and I just love well, food and I love eating so <laughs> combines it with that I can tell you as somebody who I'm at where 
pretty much I open up the fridge, I see I have this, this, and this, and yeah. I'm ready to throw it in front of the judges on chopped and say enjoy. Like, <laughs> like that that's I, mean, I like honestly <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Let's say, listen. What I, is the I, dish I, that you have been the most proud of making? Would you say? Oh, I really wish you didn't ask me that because I was literally just going to ask you that. Oh. Uh, <laughs> mm, oh. That's tough. I'll man. go. I can. I'll go first. I can give you some some okay. ideas. So, I need to look through my phone because I take pictures. Of I know. I take photos. Like exactly. I document what I make. Um, so I would say the most proud I have been, I made a sweet potato pie from scratch. So I made no, you did. I did. And then I also made the filling and it was a lot of work, but it was so satisfying. And then either my friends lied to me or they actually liked it, but they said it was really good. <laughs> well, you know, I'm from the South. So uh, we, <laughs> let me tell you something, a good sweet potato if you had a bad sweet potato pie, it is uh, an experience that you need to go to church and ask the Lord to forgive your taste buds <laughs> for indulging in such nonsense. Yeah. Oh my gosh. What is the best meal? So I look, this is a Parmesan. I made a decent meal this morning. Oh, what'd you make? I made this uh, breakfast casserole. Oh, yeah, I love this. With tots, yeah. Jimmy Dean's, eggs, yeah. and cheese. Usually, so what? What's the best dish I made? You like pasta? Like, what's your like go-to dinner dish? I guess. I'm gonna go. What did? What did? I'm trying to think. So I make a cornbread casserole from scratch. Oh, yum! My sister loves those. Yep. Uh, what else? I have mastered making turkey legs. Oh, that's hard. Turkey. I'm not too good at turkey because it gets kind of dry oh but you gotta know how to cook it so exactly. pretty much yeah. i don't like know, turkey usually so like i'll eat these, it but it's not my favorite not my favorite meat so here's what we do and i can't give away too many secrets um yeah. but we make like dressing from cornbread dressing from scratch but we okay. use like the cream of celery yeah. cream of chicken um some poultry seasoning um some onions um some celery different things like that and some chicken broth uh that is really good so i would probably say yeah. and, oh and i do make a macaroni and cheese from scratch oh yeah what what is so this is a better way for me to answer this question if you yeah. had to make what is so you have to make i'm going to give you a plate so i asked maddie this but we talked about barbecue and i can't put my foot in some barbecue i, I have you know I'm just trying to tell you. I make some yeah. I make some ribs. Lord, make yeah. you want to slap somebody. But I'm going to give you a plate. One meat, two sides of the okay. best of the best of Brittany. Like the best meal you cook. One well, meat, I two sides. If you were presenting a plate to me, I say, Brittany, listen, let's we're going to have a cooking competition. Okay, yeah. You bring your I best stuff in my best. Okay. Okay. So my, I love, I have a, my dad was really nice and bought me a like crock pot for my birthday one year. Okay. And so like a slow cooker. And so yeah. I love putting like um, pork shoulder in there and making like slow cook carnitas. And then you take them out and you broil them in your oven to make it like crispy. So it's juicy on the inside, but then the outside is kind of crispy. And then I love like corn, corn tortillas. So kind of making like um, carnitas tacos with pickled red onions um that's like one of my favorites sides um I love like street corn dip so I would do like street corn with um cheese and like a little I like spicy things so obviously I have to put some hot sauce in there oh, and then boy. um oh obviously some like good guacamole as well you make it from scratch yes easy oh, yeah so what I like easy. to put Ooh. What I like to put in it would be limes, um, garlic, and then jalapeno, seeds included, so it's spicy, and then um, to, like um, cherry tomatoes, because I like the sweeter tomatoes, so I'll chop cherry tomatoes up instead of just like a regular tomato, because they're sweeter, and I like it that way. You are about that life. Oh, man. Yeah. So I would say that would be like, that's like a typical, like if I really um, am craving like a good meal, it's something that I'll whip up, and it's really yummy. Oh, my gosh. Okay. I don't think I could beat that. Um, you could. Yeah, I believe in you. But it's good. It is good. Oh. 
Why am I having? I did make a parmesan crusted chicken with arugula. Oh yeah, um, yeah. And some mashed potatoes, um, garlic mashed potatoes. Yeah. And then what else did I make that slapped? I've been cooking green beans. So I've chopped up some, oh, yeah. up some yeah. Canadian bacon. Yeah. Toasted. Oh yeah, you gotta put bacon. Bacon with veggies is the best. It's it's the I can't oh, eat too so much good. of it. Um. But then you put it in, you know, with the green beans and everything and or collard greens. So my mom, yeah. like being from the South, you know, my mom taught me how to cook and I have like family recipes and stuff. I yeah. do. Oh, I don't know how I didn't put this on there because I make a scratch meat from, like I said, made from scratch macaroni and cheese. That yeah. I would yeah. compete with anybody. So, man. So my mom makes a mac and cheese and I don't know where she found this recipe, but my favorite part about it is she makes it, puts it in like a baking dish and then okay. crumbles up rich crackers on top and then bakes it for like 20 minutes just to make it super crunchy on top. And it is really good. Okay. My sister's favorite food is mac and cheese. So okay. she always requests that when we're home. Sweet potato pie. Cause I, we have a family recipe that thankfully I have now. And I put my foot in. I ain't gonna lie to you. I put my foot all up in oh, it. Oh, I bet it's good. Yeah. But yours, I'm curious. I want to try that. I have never it's had. Good. I didn't know. I have never met anybody from Ohio that knew anything about sweet potato pie. That's why I'm kind of shocked. So I don't yes. know if living in Durham has done it. Uh, I think but... living in Durham, and then also I have friends that are from the south. So okay. they. Yeah, so I think that is definitely where that came from. That would not have been something I would have made if I would have not moved here. Like, if I would have stayed in Ohio, I would not have known anything about that. But it was good. Oh, and Hush Puppies, that's something else that someone taught me that is amazing. I've never made my own, but I want to. Oh, my gosh. I, listen, a good Hush Puppy will get you out of a bad situation. I'm sorry. Yes, very um, good. What part of Ohio are you from? I'm from east of Cleveland. So I live 45 minutes east of Cleveland, a small town called Geneva. I know where that is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's a big track there called Spire that everyone, um, like if you're- I know where that is too. Um, yeah. So I live right down the road from Spire. That's my hometown. Oh my gosh. Okay. Small town, Ohio. I like it because I can see that kind of blue collar slag that bleeds into everything. So, you know, yeah. I'm with it. So when you're not cooking up sweet potato pies and all this other yes. food network destination dishes, <laughs> what is like, I heard you said like you bake bread. What the heck? I like like pumpkin bread, banana bread. Oh. Uh, yeah, those kind of breads. I have never made like a loaf of oh. bread. I have oh. not yet. Although my friend makes really good focaccia. Um, so I want to try that. Like the, but I have, I have not mastered um, I those I, breads yet. I need to hang around your friends because I don't know what. Oh my gosh, my friends, their food taste is amazing. Like, oh, oh my God, they've spoiled me rotten in terms of like when we have like a, um, either like a game night or something oh my god the food is incredible <laughs> like, so wow I, I wanted to ask i'm going to start asking this question more because you mentioned game night perfect training. yeah what's the best and most competitive board game that you love and would play to the death of you monopoly because Sydney Mc oh boy she's big into uno i know this see, see and because that's the question that because i'm curious what's everybody's favorite so monopoly monopoly so uno will make you fight somebody uno will i would say okay so i take that back i thought you were specifically talking about like actual board games it could be any uno, game. uno is pretty amazing i mean we all get really competitive not over it's not a board game or a card game but mario kart we go crazy Ooh. for mario kart super mario that that yeah. is that is. So my friends um, have a switch, and so usually on the weekend we'll all go over there, and you know any tension that was uh, at practice during the week is released <laughs> during Mario Kart. Mario Kart didn't realize how intense that game got. Oh my god, yeah, it's intense. Um, I've never played it. I've watched it because I don't know if I ever. I'm not. Hey, he would watch it. I need to get into that, but B, because it's so fun, but B, oh boy, that gets tense. Like, that yes, is, yeah. Yeah. like, it, it, so it's, fun, though. it's game seven tense. Um, that is interesting. Mario Kart, listen, Uno, if you get draw four two or three times, that's a fade. That's an on-site fade. I'm sorry. I will um, not be talking to you in the next two weeks. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I, I'm deleting you. <laughs> blocking you, from my life. You get you get blocked. I'm reporting you. I don't know who <laughs> yes. you report. I'm calling the FBI. 
Yep. Let me get a draw form when I have a good hand. No, it's right. a game over. Yeah. Um, when you are not caring, studying, and running, what's life like on your end? How do you maintain a uh, good balance? Because that's key as an athlete. Yeah. I think that my friends and like my community around me is the most important to me. So either say I have a weekend off, that's either going to be planning to go see my family or my family come here, either my mom, my dad, or my sister come and visit. Um, or if not, just spending time with some friends. So like after this, um, we're going to go play pickleball. And I'm so excited because I want to learn so badly how to play pickleball. I'm not good. Um, and so I think just kind of like um, trying new things with my friends is really um, how I relax on the weekends and um, decompress. Yeah. yeah you got to enjoy yourself. Uh, you do. Pickleball, yeah. I'm, I, there ain't nothing. I'm, but every, it's like the new thing now. It is, um, yeah. I don't know. It is nothing that I. It's too hot to be trying to pick a ball. I'm not even gonna lie. Yeah, you're so. in Florida. It's not too hot here, so. Oh yeah, because you live in like Narnia. Um, you know, you get, Ohio. Just, yes, yes, Ohio is Narnia. Luckily, I I'm not there right now. I'm in North Carolina. That's where I've I've come to stay. Oh, that's where you have come to stay. Um, couple more questions, then we're gonna wrap this thing up with a bow. Back to kind of the animal aspect of it mm -hmm. you talked about the love for animals you talked about the horse and horse yeah. racing how do you want to kind of change the game in that profession like what is yeah. it that so, you see that you can say you know what not that i can be better but you know this is how i can take it to another level yeah i think there's a lot of things that can change um in both vet med and in human medicine um the suicide rates in veterinarians is extremely high right now as is that in human doctors people in medicine um suffer a lot from mental health issues um i think part of that stems from the fact that when you make mistakes at work it is life or death um so you have just a lot of pressure day in and day out to do your job properly and you're also dealing with really sad cases so most people go into veterinary medicine because they love animals but you're not seeing healthy animals that's why they're coming to you so i think it's really taxing and really hard um to deal with that day in and day out um what i'm excited for is to be able to be outspoken about that and also i think that um as a lot of professional athletes know like you go through periods in your career where you're very isolated and it's very difficult. And I think my first year as a professional, I definitely experienced that. I went from being around my team all the time to being alone most of the time on the road. And you come to identify solely as an athlete. And I think it's really, really important to remind yourself that there's so much to you rather than just what you do on the track. And I think that with that experience, I can relate that to my future profession in that yes, you're a good doctor and that's why you are a vet and that's why you're doing this, but you're also a good mom and you're also a good daughter and you're a good friend. And there's so much more to you than just your job and your job performance. Um, and I think being able to connect with people on the job and be able to kind of relate to them in that sense um, can help with that, the issues that we see right now um, with mental health, mental health in the medical field, especially. How do you... Obviously, you know, you're going to be transitioning into vet school at NC State. Yeah. Uh, so ba basically, you've gone to every major school except UNC and yeah, the state of true. North Carolina. Um, how do you keep what you do fun? How how does it not, that goes for track, animals, all that oh. stuff. How does it not become a labor? Uh, yeah, I think that it's a combination of surrounding yourself with people that you really enjoy being around. So I am extremely happy this year because my training group is awesome. Maddie is one of my really, really good longtime friends. Um, she was in Austin last year and she just moved back to Durham to rejoin our training group. Having her and her boyfriend TJ back has been exponential in increasing all of our happiness. Um, she's such a bright light and I love having her back. Uh, my other training partner is Lauren Hoffman. She's a Duke graduate, uh, 400 hurdler. Um, she is a competitor and is fierce on the track, but is literally the kindest heart and soul I've ever met in somebody. Um, so I really think that the way to keep things fun is to surround yourself with such a good community. And I love the vet I work for right now because the nurses and the vets and everyone I work for um, really embodies that as well. So I think my biggest advice to keeping things fun is to be able to surround yourself with people that you truly value, you either look up to, or that make you a better person as well. 
you know, after listening to this in about seven to 10 years, I might get a dog. Yes, you should. Um, I mean, my, I got one last week and he's a perfect little angel and I love him very much. We had a dog yes. when I was like, I don't remember her. Her name was Noelle. She was a lab. Noelle, and yeah. <laughs> my mom had to put her down. Oh, I'm sad. Like, too. Yeah. And she was like, yeah, I'm not doing this again. So yeah. I was like, okay. yeah, it's hard. Uh, and then I'm not a fan of untrained animals. I've had some yes. stars. So I think actually to elaborate on that, one of my favorite things to do um, right now is, yes, spending time with my friends and like picking up random hobbies, but also training my dog has been so rewarding and so fun. He's very smart. So like I've taught him sit, stay, paw, lay down, crate, bed. And it's been so fun to like teach him. Like you really feel like you are kind of like establishing a relationship with them. And I'm also so proud of him when he like behaves well around other people or like when someone greets him and he'll sit and try to give them a paw knowing that like that's what they they want him to do. It's like really, I feel like a proud dog mom. Yeah, so <laughs> I think training him has been a lot of fun, yeah. Brittany, you have survived the interrogation process. Now we are going to the hard stuff. This segment is called Down the Home Stretch, where I'm going to ask you some rapid fire questions, yeah. and I want you to answer them to the very best of your ability. Okay. I, if I ask you to pause and elaborate on the answer, it does not count against the time. If you do not answer these questions as fast as you can, quite frankly, my friend, I don't care. It's all good. All <laughs> throw no filler. That's how yeah. we roll on this show. Yeah. Are you ready? Yes. If there was a food that you could live with for the rest of your life and a food that you would live without, what would they be? Without, definitely celery. With would be chocolate, dark chocolate specifically. Okay, cool. Favorite candy bar? Um, A crunch bar. A crunch bar? Yes. What, what, what it's it? chocolate and has little Rice Krispies in it. They're really good. I've yep. never heard of that. They come in a blue wrapper. You should look them up. They're good. Oh, that nasty candy. That's what you They're like. not nasty. They're good. Okay. Agree to disagree. Okay. Uh, okay. Wow. Okay. Uh, <laughs> but more painful loss. UNC losing to Duke in the final four or Ohio State losing to Georgia on December 31st. Oh, definitely UNC. Yeah, that was a more painful loss. UNC beating Duke. What, are, what yeah. the heck am I talking about? That's more painful than Ohio State losing to yeah. Georgia by one? With Coach K's last game, yes. That was such a great day. Um, For you, yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fair enough, fair enough. Yeah. Although, listen, you that's tough because it's like we lost by one point and probably would have won the national championship if we had just – play just a little bit better or our best receiver or our best yeah. receiver didn't get taken out of the game that's okay uh what is a dream vacation spot for you mm, greece greece okay let's yeah. just say hallmark said you know what britney's story is so amazing we want to make it a countdown to christmas movie uh what would the name of the movie be called and who would you want to play your character Mm, okay, so name of the movie would definitely be The Nut Job because I'm a squirrel, and so the, it would be based on that. Oh boy, <laughs> The Nut Job, and then um, character character to play myself, right? Yeah. Um, it would be the um, remind me. I believe it's Emma Watson who plays Hermione Granger in Harry Potter. I've always loved her, and yeah, I would want her to play it. The Nut Job. Yep. I'm trying to figure out if Hallmark would actually use that title. Hey, uh, if they don't, that's their loss. That's their loss. Lifetime or Warner Brothers will, will pick it up. I like that. You can <laughs> say her name was Brittany. She loved animals and she comes yeah. home from Durham to Geneva Falls, Ohio to yep. escape. I'm with it. I'm with it 100%. Yes, that job. Gotta be. If, if you had to be the guest a guest on any talk show or television series what show would you be a guest on mm -mm -mm. oh i don't know i don't watch talk shows very often okay i well, think it'd be really see. cool to uh be on a show with oprah i would just want to talk to her okay we can dig that that is a popular yeah. answer if you could be anything outside of a vet or a track star what would you be chef yes listen 
Chef Britt in the kitchen. I'm with that one. <laughs> living it up in the kitchen. I have percent like Ja Rule just living it up. What do I do? Okay, that's yes. that's yep. for the audience. Uh dream concert to attend. Ooh. Um I found this on the web. <laughs> no for whatever reason I, I hate when my watch does this it oh yeah don't worry, i'll no. be talking and it thinks i'm talking to it and then it looks right. up what i say on the internet it's the stupidest oh thing. my god yeah, um I dream concert i would say so i loved juice world but of course that cannot happen anymore so it would be a dream only juice world Let's see. I'm trying to think. No, I'm trying to see who that is. Because he, so, I mean. I oh, the rapper. Oh, yes. oh, oh, him. Oh, rest in peace. Yeah. Yeah. So I love him, but yeah, that would be impossible. So only a dream. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yep. Rest, oh, Lord, rest in peace. If you had to have dinner with anybody that wasn't Oprah, who would it be? They have to be living. They can't be dead. Yes. Yep. Um. Barack Obama. Yeah. Barack, yes, definitely. <laughs> um, all right. He's just, just such a good speaker, too. Like, I feel like he would, he's just, yeah, I would really enjoy just having dinner with him, being able to talk to him. And yes, literally, like, if he could, like, call a shot put event that I competed in, like, I, yeah. would, I yes. would be all for that. All right, yeah. just a few more questions. Any Food Network star that you would want to be, any Food Network show, excuse me, um, that you would want to be a guest on? Oh, anything Gordon Ramsay. Is Gordon Ramsay Food Network? I think so. Or is Hell's Kitchen not on Food Network? I, I think that's on Fox. Is it on Fox? Okay. Anything with Gordon Ramsay. I bet he has something on Food Network. So I hope so. I think he did. See, I couldn't do Gordon Ramsay. Like, you can't I call also me love a- um, Emerald. What, how you say oh, Latin Lugosi? Yeah, I love it. Yeah. Oh, Emerald. Yeah. Live with Emerald. Th- those, that was like one classic. of the first cooking shows I would watch when I was little with my dad was Emerald. 90s or 2000s character, cartoon character that you relate to the most or just character in general. Kim so Possible. Basically, Kim Possible. Oh my gosh. I can see naked that. Mole rat. With Rufus <laughs> and everything. Yes. We have a best friend, Ron. Oh, that is yes. a criminally under rated show yeah, I, can like that. I like that okay cool just a couple more questions if well actually what is the best book that you've read oh so my coach wants me to read more because he really enjoys books so he's always recommending books to me um i'm not super big reader i want to be i want to get better at reading um i think being in school for a really long time has kind of ruined leisure reading for me Okay. Um, but I love right. the Harry Potter series. The Harry Potter series is amazing. Okay, I like specifically that. the book book number four, Goblet of Fire, is my favorite. Okay, I'm not huge on Harry Potter except for the Rise at Universal. Okay, last two questions: yeah. If you could have anybody narrate a race that you participate in, who would it be? So I really love when um, Sonia Richards-Ross does commentary for USATF. I think that she's amazing, especially too. I think it's super important to have people that really know the sport um, yes. and respect the athletes. So I love when she narrates. Um, so it would definitely be um, really, honestly, I, I um, she's a huge role model. So I think that I love when she narrates, but also like if Allison Felix was to narrate races, I think that would be incredible as well. We should, they need like an all-star lineup of like, Allison Felix, Sonia Richards Ross, yeah, and then like a wild card like Snoop Dogg or Leslie Jones. Or it would be great, like yeah, well, especially too to just hear like because obviously different um, athletes have different opinions on like what really like what they have different just like race strategies or what works or what doesn't work. So it'd be super interesting to have multiple really accomplished athletes be able to kind of have an open discussion while they're just while they're commentating um, races. That'd be really cool. And like you said, they know what they're talking about. Yeah, they know what they're talking about. They can relate to the athletes. And I think it's also really difficult when we have a lot of these commentators that don't, that have never competed on a stage like that. And they can say some really hurtful things. Um, And I just find it incredible for people to be so quick to judge um, when they really don't 
know what they're talking about. You, you don't know. You don't know the athletes. You don't know their story. You don't know the yeah. behind the scenes. So I'm with that. Last question. Why yeah. does kindness matter to you? Um, I think kindness matters because I have benefited immensely in my life from people being kind to me. And I think that it's important to reciprocate that and give kindness to other people. Brittany, you have survived down the home stretch. You aced that. So I, that, listen, that's, that's, that's falling. That might be the best of 2023 so far. So I am with that. I am with that. Yes. Where can the people find you? Where can the people support your journey? Yeah. So I currently am based in Durham, North Carolina. Um, you can find me on either my Instagram, which is just Brit underscore of any, um, or hopefully see you at some meets and outdoor. And yeah. Follow along and stay tuned. Follow along on the journey. Please do that. Not only to see Brittany tear up the competition this year and get closer and not, if not, well, listen, let's just manifest it. Make that team. Yeah, that I want to go to Budapest. To, that heads <laughs> over to Budapest. You see, yes. you don't know, Brittany going to be anchoring that four by four leading USA to a W. Um, yes. So listen, I'm with that. Please be sure to follow and subscribe to Allison Waits Fast Women uh, newsletter. We'll have that in the news or in our um, our show notes uh, for this episode. I would like to extend my deepest hopes to UNC. If you win these next two games, specifically this one, win the series, I don't have to eat that coffee ice cream. You're so going to love please... it. You'll eat it and you'll like it. It's fine. <laughs> well, then you're saying Duke's going to win. So I, 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 I sure I... hope so. Yeah, well whatever uh this season's been so <laughs> anxiety ridden that i just kind of want oh <laughs> the overflow team Brittany, i appreciate you fam i cannot wait to see how you tear up pickleball soon and oh yes please yes please be sure <laughs> to stay tuned with Brittany when she opens up her vet yeah. so you'll learn more about the animals and yeah. make it the best veterinarian in the world until next time peace